Hey, what it do, y'all? It's your boy E2 Blue coming back at you again. It's been a little while since I've done a video. Um, th those of you that didn't know, um, I had a stomach virus. Uh, I was really sick. Um, I lost some weight because <laughs> I didn't eat for like two days. But um, I'm much better now. I feel much better. Back out, back up and at them, back at work. Um, just want to do a video for you guys. Um, a lot has happened this week um, since I haven't been around, I see. Um, those of you that uh, saw my post that I did on in the community section on the uh, YouTube channel, um, thanks for the fell, the well wishes. I appreciate each and every one of you guys um, wishing me well. I, I love you. I appreciate it. Um, also, as we embark on our next season, which you know we're still in playoffs technically, but Cowboys are done and we're just looking for the future at this point because we're not in it right now. So we're pretty much hopeful for next year. So a couple of things to uh, get off the, the iron board here. <laughs> Xavier Woods, he was on Undisputed and he was basically, um, you know, of course, Shannon, uh, Shannon Sharp was trashing the Cowboys like he normally does and trashing Jerry and the coaching staff and everything like, you know, within reason, you know, but, you know, it's it's always trolling within that. You already know where that comes from. But, you know, biggest thing I got out of it, he said, hey, playoffs next year, Super Bowl next year. Now, every player is going to say that every year because, again, what else are you going to say? You're not going to wish your team to be eight and eight or six and ten. You're not going to do that. You're going to wish for your team to do well every year, and that's what you should do. And I think that with this new regime with Mike McCarthy, you know, optimistically speaking, I think that it's going to be definitely better than it was before because you can't get no worse at this point. Um, I feel like even with the players that we have coming back, I think that it's vital to um, take this coach and staff to the next level. And I think that this is what Jerry was thinking. You know, we know that his love for Jason Garrett was strong. We know that. But with Stephen Jones basically saying, hey, look, we got to cut bait. We got to get better. We got to do something different. So that's what the Cowboys did. They literally went big. They got Mike McCarthy, and he made a pretty much a clean sweep with this coaching staff. I think the only guys that are still left from Garrett's um, regime are Kellen Moore and um, Doug Nussmeyer. Now, some of the hires I agree with, well, a lot of the hires I agree with. Some of them I'm like, eh, I'm a little iffy about because I don't know. And I'm really iffy about this defense, but I'm going to get into that in a minute. Um, I had wrote some notes down, and I was just looking at some things and looking up some numbers. So before I get into the coaching staff, I just want to talk about uh, Dak Prescott. So, you know, Dak Prescott is not signed. And we're sitting here like, okay, when is he going to get signed? Now, I know some people said, oh, yeah, let's go ahead and franchise tag him. Be careful with that. Because you see that, you remember that Kirk Cousins situation, right? Hmm. And he ended up going to the playoffs. You know, sometimes you cut bait with a player because you think that that player was the issue. But actually, you know, if they had a better coaching squad or somebody that was in that said quarterback's ear, he would play better. And I think that Kirk Cousins did play better when he was with the Vikings than the aforementioned Redskins. Um, they franchise tagged him twice. Which, when you do a quarterback like that, all it does, it, it shows that quarterback that, hey, you don't value him as your leader of this team, a guy that you want going forward, basically your franchise guy. You don't value him as that. So, that it kind of it kind of sets um, a separation there. So, you start to look at it like, well, damn, these, this team don't even want me like that. So, why, what am I doing here? What, what is my purpose? And I don't want Dak to feel like that. And, you know, Steven Jones goes on and on and telling, well, we got to get him signed. We value him. Uh, if you do, then go ahead and sign the boy. We already know that Dak's not going to get anywhere lower than 35 mil. So it, right now, it's between 35 and 40. Now, if you mess around and wait for uh, <laughs> Mr. Pat Mahomes' contract, remember, 
They're in the championship game this weekend. And if they win, they're going to the Super Bowl. And you know he's going to command north of $40 million. And he is going to reset that market value way higher than what it is right now. And you're going to end up overpaying for Dak more than what you think that he deserves. Now, do I think that Dak deserves 38, 36, 37, 38? Maybe even 40? Yes, I do. For the sheer fact, not just because of his play. I mean, he did almost beat Tony Romo's season record in passing. Even though we were 8-8 eight eight team, you got to look at his individual stats. You look at what he's done in the four years that he's been here. He's made it to the playoffs a couple of times. You know what I mean? Like, you know, he's done what he's done and what he could do as a leader, as a quarterback of his team. He was always poised. He never backed down. He never threw his whack coaching staff under the bus. He never blamed anybody else. He always took the credit for everything. And that alone is a leader that you want leading your football team. T.O. came out and said some stupid stuff like, oh, well, they should get rid of Dak and get Tom Brady. So you want a right now solution, but then what's going to happen when he retires? Because Tom Brady ain't got long left in, in, his, in his NFL career. And he's slowing down a lot. You can see that. So, but you still got a young, strong, able-bodied quarterback like Dak Prescott that's proven to you that he ain't never missed a game despite of him um, having an AC joint damage in his shoulder. Still playing. He could have easily said, hey, I'm not, I'm not, y'all ain't signed me. So I'm only making $2 million for this year. He could easily hit a Ezekiel Elliott and held out and not played in those games and let them start um, Cooper Rush. He could have done that. And I, and I said this when, when that time, during that time, I said that he could have easily said that. But the fact that he didn't shows that he's about the team. He's about winning and he's about um, wanting to be a team player. And he wants to see the Cowboys succeed. So that alone, yes, I do think that he deserves that money. Now, higher than 40 mil, no. But you can get him for that right now. And you could get him a five-year contract. And you could spread that money out so it doesn't hit your cap like that this year. Now, the Cowboys are going to have roughly $94 million in the offseason. And I don't think that's including the players that you have that are free agents that that money is still, you know, calculated um, because it's still under the books. But once their contracts expire, um, it's going to be gone. So that's even more money on top of your $94 million. Remember, the salary cap went up $8 million too. So the Cowboys got money. So you guys got to stop with this narrative like, oh, if we sign Dak and we sign Amari, we won't be able to sign everybody else. The Cowboys can do that. And they're actually really good with their cap space. With Steven Jones and whoever else is helping him with that money figure, they're doing a good job, those, those accounting guys. They're doing a good job with this money. Um, they, they can get it done, and it's a way that you can get it done. Both Dak and Amari... You can get their contracts done. You can give them longer years. You give them both five-year contracts. Spread that damn thing out over the course of the contract so it doesn't hit so hard the first year. That's how you deal with that. Some of you guys got to understand the financial, the business side of football too, and 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 stop listening to that crap that y'all hear. Uh, oh, Cowboys can't do this. Yeah, they don't know what the Cowboys can do. They don't know. They don't know what they're going to do, and they don't know what they can because they ain't in their pockets like that. They don't understand how the dynamic works with that. Now, I want my main guys I want back. I want Dak back. I want Amari back. Um, I want Robert Quinn back because he he was your leading sack guy this year, and I think that it's important for them to be here, and I'm going to mention him in a second with the defense. Um, Randall Cobb, I definitely want Randall Cobb back, especially now that Mike McCarthy is the coach. Um, I feel like he could do some even better things with Randall Cobb than he did last year. Um, he's going to be killer in that slot. And it just gives you an intelligent guy and a veteran guy in that wide receiver locker room to help out with these younger guys, too, um, during their maturation process. So um, I do want Randall Cobb back. Now, Byron Jones. Now, some of you guys are don't care about Byron Jones because you say that he doesn't get interceptions, blah, blah, blah. I understand that. That is a sexy thing for a cornerback to get interceptions, things of that nature. But Byron Jones is a solid corner. Name how many times that a, a player has actually scored on him. Not many times. And the times that they did was when he was injured. He's always there. He's batting the ball down. He's doing different things. And I think that 
Byron Jones here with the new coaching staff, I think it's going to be better for him because, again, and underneath Rob Marinelli and Chris Richard, they a lot of guys weren't looking back for the ball. And this new regime, they're going to tell them, hey, you got to look back for that damn ball. So it's going to be a different teaching. So I just think that things are going to be a little better in, in that mindset. Now, um, that's all I have with that part. You guys can let me know what you think about that. But just trust me, they got money. They can do the things that they need to do. It just depends on what this new coaching staff decides to do and how they value the players. Because you got to think of it like this. Some of the guys that didn't do well, Mike McCarthy's team might be like, hey, we like this guy. We could do something better than him than what they did because they weren't utilizing him right. You know, we always tried to oust Tavon Austin. I think that Tavon Austin is a really good guy if you know what the hell to do with him. And I think that with, with uh, Fossil here as the special teams coordinator, I think that, you know, him coming from the Rams and coaching Tavon when he was on, under the special teams with the Rams, I think that they might keep him because of that reason. Who knows? We'll see. Now, speaking of contracts ending, Jason Garrett's contract officially expired yesterday. So let's get a hand clap for Jason Garrett and his contract being expired, even though he's already gone. And apparently he's interviewing with the Giants offensive coordinator. And it'd be kind of weird to see him across the field twice a, twice a year. That'd be interesting to see that. But um, as I talk about the coaching staff, now I already said that Mike McCarthy came and made a clean sweep. He got guys out of there. The only two guys that are left right now that are that are that are uh, that they that they plan on keeping that they said they were solid that they're going to keep cuz even though the coaching staff is not 100% finalized it's 90% complete right now um uh Kellen Moore staying as the offensive coordinator and I guess the helper of Mike McCarthy cuz he's still calling plays but I think that the reason why Kellen Moore is staying is because he saw some of the plays that the Cowboys did last year and that was Kellen Moore's doing um a lot of that a lot of that Dak's numbers being higher helped Dak, and he knew that that was Kellen Moore trying to come up with some different things. And he probably looking at him like, oh, this is boy genius right here. He's inexperienced, but I think that I can work with him. And I think that under my tutelage and me calling plays and him watching what I do will help him. And I can see how he does evaluate Kellen Moore and possibly give that job to him after that. Now, um, you look at Doug Nussmeyer. Doug Nussmeyer moved from tight ends coach, and now he's the quarterback's coach, which means that John Kitten is now ousted. And I think the way they looked at it, they, they thought it was too many chefs in the kitchen, too many um, mouths and ears and, and Dax, too many mouths and Dax ears. So they just wanted one guy talking to him primarily. So um, John Kitten is not here anymore. But John Kitten is cool because he's going to go back and coach in college like he was before the Cowboys got him. I love John Kitten. I think he did very well with Dak Prescott and helping him out. But Doug Nussmeyer knows him as well. So I think that we can still continue that with Doug Nussmeyer. So as the coaching staff is right now, um, I talked about it in the video before the last one I did a while back, but things have been updated since then. So here's an update. Um, Cowboys hired the Texas A&M um, assistant coach, uh, Maurice Linguist. Uh, he is the new DB coach for the Dallas Cowboys. So um, he's basically, that's Chris Richard's job. He's took that. So um, now, real quick on Chris Richard, it's funny how in the offseason of last year, we were like, oh, he's going to be the coach at some point. He's a fiery. We love him. He's either going to be that or definitely the defensive coordinator. He's definitely going to be the defensive coordinator. Then look what happened at the end of the year. It was almost like he fell out of favor. I don't know what happened. But from what I heard is that his, his views, Rob Marinelli's views, they didn't mesh. Some of the things that he wanted to do was different than what Rob Manelli wanted to do. And then he had an um, issue with um, the linebackers coach, Ben Bloom. They didn't see eye to eye. So it was a lot of drama within that, which which transpired. Um, it was transitioned into the linebackers and how they played and, and blah, blah. So it was a lot of problems that was going on there. So I think some of that is the reason why they're gone. Um, and of course, Rob Marinelli's system is just old. Like they, they we had to change that. 
Um, speaking of linebackers coach, the, the Dallas Cowboys hire Scott McCurley as the new linebackers coach. Now, it's not official if he's going to be the linebackers coach or is he going to be assistant or if they're going to actually bring in another um, guru linebacker. But as of right now, he's the linebackers coach. Um, Jeff Blasco, um, he is going to be the assistant offensive line coach, the assistant to uh, Joe Philbin. Um, and like I said, Doug Nussmeyer has been moved to wide receiver, I mean, quarterbacks coach. Um, Keller Moore's OC, Mike Nolan, Mike Nolan, um, his dad, Dick Nolan, he worked here with the Cowboys under Jason, G uh, J Jerry Jones. Um, and, um, he's very well known by the Jones family. So, um, just some things about him. I have a little iffy feeling about Nolan, but I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, John Fossil, um, Bones, Bones, man. Um, this is one of my favorite hires right here. The special teams coordinator. Because I watched him when he was at the Rams and when they were on um, All or Nothing. And I, and I just watched how the Rams were and, 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 and what he did and all the trickery that he did. And he made that special teams great. Um, actually, their punter, when he found out that Fossil left to go get signed by the Cowboys, he tweeted out like, no, not my coach. He was really upset. He was taking it hard, their punter. Because, you know, he helped him make plays and do different things. And make, he made special teams fun. Um, Cowboys are dead last in damn special teams. And, and with the signing of John Fossil, is, it was perfect for them. So I think that, that that's one of my favorite Cowboy signings right there. Um, right there. Joe Philbin, I think when, I, that's about the second. He's the offensive line coach. Now, I'm going to miss Mark Colombo. I think that he was good. But I think that... Mike McCarthy looked at it like, hey, you guys hired all these former players and young guys, young inexperienced players. I want to get an experienced staff on here. And you look at the Dallas Cowboys staff right now, it's a superstar squad right now. And when I say superstar, I mean all of these guys have experience, experience, at least eight or more years. It's crazy. Um, but, yeah, uh, Joe Philbin is offensive line coach. He was a former um, head coach himself. So we got guys with head coach experience on this on this roster. I mean, on this um, coaching staff. Jim Tom Sula is the defensive line coach. He's going to be um, basically taking over Leon Lett's position. Goodbye, Leon Lett. I don't know if some of those guys like Leon Lett, they're going to make – because they can always create a position for Mark Colombo and some of the former players that were on the staff. They can put them in the background – um, and just create a, a, a – it'll be a demotion. But if they really want to stick around, they can make some positions for them because Jerry Jones got the money. Because remember, the coaching staff money comes from Jerry Jones' pot, not from the league. Um, tight ends coach. It was a lot of speculation whether Jason Witten was going to be um, the tight ends coach. And, you know, I knew that was a bunch of crock of shit. But um, Lunda, Lunda Wells – uh, tight ends coach, former Giants tight ends coach, um, is coming to the Dallas Cowboys. So we got a former Giants staffer on here. Um, that's going to be interesting. Now, I don't know if they're still going to bring in Jason Witten um, to work behind the scenes and do some things with Jerry. Who knows? I don't know. We still don't know if he's quit playing or not. He's so – he don't know what he want to do yet. So we'll, we're still waiting on that. Um – this is one hire that some of you guys probably already know. He was actually uh, on this staff before. Uh, Skip Pete. Skip Pete comes back as the running backs coach for the Dallas Cowboys. Remember, you remember Skip Pete? He was the running backs coach during the Marion Barber, Felix Jones, um, and DeMarco Murray beginning of his career um, up until 2014. In 2014, and that's when we got Gary Brown. Now, Gary Brown was really good with Ezekiel Elliott and, and, and Tony Pollard, and that's their guy. They love each other. And I just thought that they were going to keep Gary Brown. They went out and tried to get Stanton, um, uh, the Texas guy. Uh, um, they tried to get Stanton, but uh, apparently Stanton won too much money, so he didn't accept the job. So they ended up signing Skip Pete. Skip Pete uh, was with the Rams. He was over there with Fossil. Uh, he was with the Rams. He was with Ty Gurley, so we know what Skip Pete can do. You know, he was on the staff before, so it's a lot of um, familiarity. Well, I can never say that word. Um, he's familiar with this staff, and they are familiar with him. So that's that. 
Now, I do like to hire with Skip Pete, but I did like Gary Brown too. So I'm a little torn. But I think either way, you're good. It. My only thing is how Ezekiel Elliott is going to respond to Skip Pete. Because when Skip Pete was here, um, you know, Ezekiel Elliott was at Ohio State. And before that, he was in high school. So, I mean, you know, it is what it is. He was out there in St. Louis. <laughs> um, but, yeah, the Rams, um, yeah, we got those guys from the Rams, from the L.A. Rams. Um, wide receivers coach is still technically open. They fired Sanjay Lau. And the situation with Sanjay Lau is, if you guys don't know, um, I think a lot of – it was a lot of hoorah going on about – you know, him making the wide receivers run with bricks and things of that nature and might associate it with them dropping the ball. I don't know how that works, but um and I think that he had he had an issue with Amari Cooper and he was the reason why Amari Cooper wasn't on the field and Randall Cobb wasn't on the field on that fourth and eight play that we could have converted to win the game. I mean, yeah, but you know, that that crap. So that that that's that. But for the wide receiver coach, they are interviewing. I think they're interviewing him today. Adam Henry. He he's the he was the wide receiver coach for the uh, Cleveland Browns. So he was coaching Odell Beckham and um, and Landry and uh, yeah, Laron Landry. I mean not Laron. <laughs> that's the old safety from. The <laughs> so uh, yeah, so Landry and. Um, and um, Odell Beckham. So he was coaching them. Now, I don't know much about him. I got to do some research on Adam Henry, but they're interviewing him. So we'll see what happens with him. Now, that's the coaching staff right there. You know, it's it's not completely complete. We'll get the final word um, either this weekend or at the start of next week. So I'll probably do a video on that. I'll probably do a live stream on that. Let you guys talk about that. Hash that out and see what we can do. Um... Real quick before I um, end this video, I did want to talk about um, um, Mike Nolan, the new defensive coordinator. I'm a little up in the air about him. I know that, you know, he was with San Francisco and doing, was doing some things with them. And I just... Hold on. Yeah, I just, I, I look at Mike Nolan, right? And I'm like, you know, doing your research on him, he was mostly a 3-4 guy, right? He ran a 3-4 scheme. Right now, the Cowboys are running a 4-3. We have all the staff and the personnel for a 4-3. Now, I really hope that they don't change this scheme to a 3-4 right now. Because I look at his defense, and I think that a lot of their faults was, yeah, it, it was them. But it was a scheme that we were running. We did the same thing. We didn't disguise coverage, coverages. Rob Marinelli, just, it just, his system was just, it's just, it was just old. And it was outdated. I don't think that they need to switch the whole scheme from a 4-3 to a 3-4. I don't think it was that bad. I think that they need to switch how they're doing things. You know, that cover three, I think they need to do some more cover one. I think they need to uh, play more man. They need to figure out some things in certain situations. You got to tell your, your DBs to turn around for the ball because that's the reason why we're not intercepting the ball. So when the ball gets there, we're just trying to knock it out of the guy's hands. And a lot of times it don't work because if you got a guy like how Dez was, it's going to high point, he's going to catch it every time. So that's just where I'm at with that. I, I just, I, you know, you look at guys like, and that's going to change – who you sign. We have almost 30 of our players that are free agents right now. And that's including Dak and Amari. Which we know they're, they're going to be back. But 18 of those guys are on defense. You know, Michael Bennett, he might retire. Who knows what happens? We don't know what's going to happen to him. But a guy that I really want back, I want Quinn back. you got to get Quinn back. Now, Quinn is not a 3-4 guy. This is the reason why we got him. The Dolphins ran a 3-4. They couldn't do much with him because he's not good in the 3-4. We don't have the personnel for 3-4. D-Law is not good in 3-4. We don't the line back, the biggest thing is the linebackers. We have really small hybrid linebackers. They're not made for rushing the passer like that. They're they're coverage guys. 
they're space guys. How I was when I played a linebacker position. Like, I was a space guy. I was not rushing no passer, trying to eat up no blocks from no offensive lineman. Now, I, I would blitz. Yeah. When I saw open lanes, I would blitz the hell out of the quarterback. And that's what our linebackers do. But you're not going to get that production. If you, if you switch to a 3-4, it's going to be trash. We don't have the personnel for it. You're going to have to basically, if you're going to do that, Every pick in the draft gonna have to be defense this year if you're trying to switch their three four. But that would be stupid. You can't do that. Nobody does that. That's never happened before. <laughs> so, cause you got needs everywhere. So, what I suggest is that they keep the four three. Mike Nolan has to keep that four three. Then you can sign back Quinn. You can figure out what you're gonna do with D Law. You got to move him around because D Law was getting a lot of double. He was getting double teamed by not only the tight. He was getting they was he was getting picked off by two tight ends and the offensive lineman. Three people blocking him, and then we, and then that's how Quinn got open, and then Michael Bennett was doing this thing. But you got to keep this line intact. Even if Michael Bennett don't come back, you got to keep Quinn because you because he's a great complement to D Law. Now. Um, I think if we did switch to a 3-4, the only you only got a couple of guys on this team that could transition well to that. And I would say Tyrone Crawford, um, uh, and um uh, Tyrone Crawford and literally and Christian Covington. Those are the two guys that and you know, Christian Covington is he only had a year contract, so his contract's up. So you gotta figure out what you're gonna do. If you're gonna run, continue to run that four three, there's certain guys you gotta bring back. If you run a 3-4, you're going to have to get rid of a lot of guys and start over. You're going to have to go get guys a free agency. Because if you're going to run a 3-4, you should have got T.J. Watt. But, yeah, that, that, because he's a 3-4 guy. But it is what it is. But that's all I have. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. Um, And I'm back. It's your boy E2Blue. Always keeping it real. Talk to y'all soon.